Hey everybody, so today we're going to be going over how to build a decentralized exchange that uses actually an order book as opposed to a bonding curve, which I kind of went over in another video. And the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to use Chainlink. So Chainlink will be able to give us on-chain price feed data securely. So we're going to be trading between Ethereum and DAI. So DAI is a stable coin. So one full DAI is equal to one US dollar. And Ethereum is the native currency of the Ethereum blockchain. So basically you would pay Ethereum if you want to do a certain transaction on the Ethereum blockchain with Ethereum. So another cool feature of this uh, project that we're going to be building is we're going to add fees. So for a trader, that doesn't sound very cool. But it, the good thing is that the fees are not crazy. Like Uniswap is 0.3% for a trade. But this uh, look, uh, this exchange that we're going to be building is only 0.2%. So it's, it's a little less than Uniswap. But the, the reason this is cool, if you're a liquidity provider, is that you actually earn yield. So you're, you'll actually be making money during these trades that are done on the liquidity pool for this uh, decentralized exchange. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's look deeper into this. Okay, before we build this project, we are going to actually go over how to get testnet Ethereum and DAI. So for this project, I will be using the Rinkeby network. So you could use this Rinkeby faucet. So if you have a Twitter or Facebook, you can basically tweet or make a Facebook post about Rinkeby and needing the Rinkeby faucet for some testnet Ethereum. And you put the address of that post in from social media in here, and then you can get Ethereum. And if you want DAI, you can actually go here. So you go to supply markets and go to DAI. And right now I'm on MetaMask on the Rinkeby network. And I would scroll all the way to the bottom and I would click on faucet. So then MetaMask will come up, hit confirm. I'm just going to wait for this to go through. And let's check our wallet. And uh, yeah, there we go. We just got a hundred testnet die just by doing that. Here we have the solidity programming section of the project. So here we first define the MIT license for the compiler and the version of solidity. And this version of Solidity, because it's above 0.8.0, it has safe math automatically built into it so that it'll prevent overflow when we do mathematical operations, So, which is very convenient. And then we're going to import two contracts. We're going to import this contract so that we can get the Ethereum price feeds through uh, Chainlink. And here we're going to also import the ERC20 contract so that we can interact with DAI. And we pass that information into the constructor here for DAI, the name and the symbol. Okay, so this is the main contract for the project. So here we're gonna define the Ethereum price feed, which is based off of the aggregator v3 interface. And this constructor is going to define the Oracle address the Ethereum price feed on Rinkeby. And here we're going to have a function where we get all this data about the Ethereum price feed, but we only really need the price information from the price feed. So a few things to note about this is that we're going to treat it as a unsigned integer as opposed to an int so that we can do uh, several different mathematical oper operations with it easily. Um, if you don't do this, uh, some of the math that has been done in this contract will not compile. They'll throw an error because of the data types. So that's why I have made it a uint and I converted it. So basically, if I, if I just had it like this, it would just convert it automatically. But I also scaled it up so that it would be compatible with the uh, die balance for the trades that we're going to be doing. 
So here, what I'm doing is I'm actually scaling it uh, 10 to the power of 10. So 10 times 10 to the power of 10. So yeah, so in Solidity, um, instead of using a caret for exponents, you use a double asterisk. Okay, so now we're going to define some variables. So this is the liquidity pool address. That's basically the person that's uh, the person providing the liquidity to the pool. And yeah, I think I said liquidity pool address. No, I'm sorry, liquidity pool provider address. The liquidity pool will be address dot this, sorry, address parentheses this, that's that actual address. This is just the person that's gonna be lending their funds to the contract for yield so that people could trade on it as well. So here we have the die rank of B address. So we pass this address into the ERC20 contract and this token die object will allow us to basically use all the ERC20 functions such as approve and uh, like get balance or balance of or allowance. So now we have the modifier for checking if you are the liquidity provider. So if that's the case, then you can proceed with the function that is questioning that. So like, for example, here, here you have that, but here you don't. So to speak, so if it's true and you're, if you're the liquidity provider connecting to the uh, contract, then you shall be able to interact with this function. If not, then you will get a gas error and it'll tell you, hey, you have to be the uh, liquidity provider. Your address has to match. So first, as a liquidity provider, we are going to provide some die to the pool. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see, hey, do you have enough die? So for this contract, we uh, have it as 3,700 die. So 3,700 die is equivalent to $3,700. And I have this scaled up here because uh, die can also, die has 18 decimal places. So we scale it up so that, you know, you have it to like $1, so to speak. So if I had like one here, it would, you know, be $1. But if I go back, it's $3,700. So that's why we do that. So we're going to see, we're going to ask, hey, do you have, this uh, balance of die in your wallet as a liquidity provider. And if you do, did you allow this through the ERC-20 contract? And if both are true, then the contract will take the 3,700 die from the liquidity provider and hold it within the liquidity pool. Okay, and then next what we're gonna do after that is we're going to basically allow a trader, any trader, on Ethereum, we'll be able to basically sell one Ethereum and exchange it for DAI. So we're gonna see, hey, are you sending one Ethereum? You need one Ethereum and message dot value to uh, do this. And then we're gonna check the pool. We're gonna ask the pool, hey, do you have enough DAI to cover this uh, exchange? And here, here you could actually see the 0.2% trade fee. So if this was a thousand over a thousand, then it would be a fair trade, but it's not. It's a, there's a small fee, there's 0.2% fee. So that's why we subtract two from the 1,000 here. And that should be the 0.2% fee. So if we check that, so basically they don't get all the die that they should get because of the fee. And that's built into the contract. That's the rules of this exchange. So once both of these are true, Basically, we will take the Ethereum from the trader and then we will transfer the die to the trader based off of the fee calculation. And then we will, so after that, we will add ETH to the pool as a liquidity provider. So we will put in one Ethereum into message.value. And once that is done, then someone can go, like any, any trader could come in and say, hey, I want to buy that one Ethereum with my die. So first we're going to double check. Is there Ethereum? Is there one Ethereum at least in the liquidity pool? And if that's true, okay, we're going to ask the trader, Hey, do you have enough die to buy this Ethereum? 
with the fee included. So that's again, if it was a fair trade, it would be a thousand over a thousand, but it's not. You have the zero point two percent fee, right? So so I have to add extra die. So we're going to ask, hey, do you have that die in your wallet? And if so, have you allowed it through the ERC-20 contract? Kind of how we had it from before. And if all that is true, then we will take the die from the trader and then we will give the trader one Ethereum. Okay. And then finally, for this, we have the ability to withdraw the funds as a liquidity provider. So we're going to check, Hey, are you the liquidity provider? And we're also going to check, Hey, liquidity pool. Do you have any funds? Do you have any, do you have any die or do you have any Ethereum? If either is true, then let the liquidity provider interact with this function. So the reason I put this check in is because if you don't put this check in and someone executes this function, they're going to be wasting Ethereum executing it because it's like, Hey, wait, why am I doing this if there's no money to be withdrawn? So it's like, that's why this is checking, hey, contract, do you have any money? <laughs> if you don't, then don't let the liquidity provider touch this because it, it wouldn't make sense. The person's just going to burn gas for no reason. Um, a few things I want to just reemphasize. So here is the, so for the math here, this was basically the Ethereum price feed. So I kind of skipped over that when explaining the percentages, but yeah, so basically we're just scaling this based off of the fee that we have. And I think one last thing I want to add is that for adding the liquidity. So in this case, you could do kind of one or one A or two A interchangeably. It doesn't really matter. But one thing to note is that if you were doing a like a general um, bonding curve type of liquidity pool, you would generally need to sta uh, stake or provide the liquidity of both assets at the same time. That's not always true. There's some exchanges like Bancor, which have a mechanism or algorithm or contract. It's, they have a special way of having it so you can only, or you have the option of only staking one type of asset in a pool. You could, you could theoretically still dual stake or double side stake, however you want to say it. Um, to assets on Bancor, but they also give the option to do that. It's it's a little complicated. They I think they have like some type of Bancor like dedicated for the pool that someone will take eventually. Okay, so now we're gonna do the demo for the project. So first we're going to send Dai to the pool as a liquidity provider. So let's try that. So before we do that, again we have to approve it to the contract address. So we're going to approve 3700 die. So we scaled it up because of the fact that there's 18 de uh, decimal places for die by default. So we have to scale it. So we're going to approve. We're going to confirm this in MetaMask. Just double checking that there that were the liquidity provider. And now we could send the die. Okay, so it might not show up instantly on Etherscan, but for the sake of time, you could just skip to this part and go to being a trader here. It might show up by the time we switch to being a trader and put in the ETH amount. Let's see. Okay, it didn't show up yet, but technically you could send the ETH because it detected it already with the die in the contract. So let me just, let's just wait. Should take a second. Okay, yeah, there's the die. 3700 die, confirm. So we're selling Ethereum for die at a 0.2% fee. Okay, we're just gonna wait for that to confirm. 
Okay, so we sold our ETH and we should have the die. So I already had die in this contract. So not this contract, but this uh, wallet. So but as we could see, we refresh this. It might take a second to update. So we got the ETH, still updating the die. But in the meantime, all that updates, we will go to the liquidity provider and we're gonna send it one ETH. So let's see, so one Ethereum. So we're gonna add it, add it to the liquidity pool. So we should see two ETH in a second. There goes the die. We sent it about 3,400 die, I think, roughly. So we had 3,700, so the difference is about 300, a little less. Okay, so we have two ETH, so the liquidity pool gave in the ETH successfully. So now we're gonna go back to being a trader. And now we are going to trade Ethereum for, sorry, we're gonna trade our die for Ethereum, so we're gonna buy ETH. So to do that, we are going to send another approval, but now as a trader, so this stays the same, we're still approving the contract, but we're signed in as a trader now, and we're gonna quickly do some math. So you could automate this on a front end, but I just, I wanted to do this quickly through Remix, so I'm gonna just do it quickly. So this is calculating the 0.2% fee. Just gonna pass this in. And I'm gonna approve this amount here. Okay. So we're just gonna wait for that to get confirmed. And as soon as that confirms, we will do the swap. Whoops, I meant to do the swap, not withdrawal, my mistake. <laughs> so, okay, that worked. I'm getting a little ahead of myself trying to withdraw as the uh, trader. That proves that uh, the modifier works for checking if you're a trader or not though. So, okay. So we got our Ethereum and we, yeah, so we we uh, traded the DAI and we got Ethereum. Okay, because we had like 4,000 before, but now we have about 700 DAI. So, so there should be one ETH in here. Yep, that looks good. And it got the DAI. All right. So now, as we just saw a few seconds ago, uh, we need to be a liquidity provider to withdraw everything. So let's say that we're done trading and we got all of our fees from all the traders trading our provided liquidity. Now we're just going to withdraw everything. Okay, so it's going to withdraw everything. So this should all balance out to zero. So the ETH again will be instant and the die will take a few seconds. It'll show up instantly in MetaMask, but it will take a few seconds on ether scan so okay there we go that's gone so we should see something around 3700 or more die in here okay good yeah so we we got it we got some die okay i just want to confirm this on ether scan before we close the demo should take a few seconds but it was like instantaneous in MetaMask, just so you know that it's fast. It just, either scan is slow sometimes. Okay, we're still waiting. Okay, so it confirmed here, but let me just go back and refresh this one more time. Okay, yep, there goes all the dice. So there's the demo. I hope everyone enjoyed.